Here I am in Covent Garden on what is a very typical kind of fall British day, uh, and we are going to have the distinct pleasure of walking into and exploring one of London's oldest restaurants, Rules. Uh, manager Ricky McMinimi, uh, uh, the managing director, is going to show us around and tell us everything about what makes this restaurant so incredible. So join me as we go inside. Ricky, it's so, so nice to see you again. How nice to see you. Uh, it's so great to be back. Thank you so much for oh, having me. It's lovely me. to have you back again. Yeah. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I mean, of course, Rules, I mean, one of my favorite restaurants in the world, e even amongst uh, the London restaurants, which there's so many great historic ones, I think Rules still stands out as truly unique. The ambiance, the decor, the menu, uh, this place is uh, always at the top of my list of places that I want to visit whenever I'm here. Oh, that's so very kind. And it's always a pleasure to yes, see you back. Well, and it's so nice to, to be back. So I was thinking that on this video, uh, you know, there's so, um, there's so much rich history here in this restaurant. You know, you've been here for the better part of 30 years, but this restaurant has been here, you know, for well over 200. Uh, that you might kind of share with us, you know, some of the secrets about what really makes Rules so special and unique pleasure. What I love about Rules is the continuity within that history. Um, I'm on the fourth generation of some families you know, have been coming here and that's lovely to see families come and still recognise what is the unchanging side of Rules. Mm -hmm. And one of the beauties of that for me, Kirby, if you don't mind, if I just move to this side is Rules has only ever been privately owned. It's not part of a big corporation, and so it's always been in private hands. And in actual fact, it's only ever been in three families Amazing. since it opened in 1798. Incredible. The Rules family held it up until the end of the First World War, and then the Bell family took over up until 1984 when John Mayhew came over. And the wonderful thing for me is, being in private hands, we enjoy the eccentricity of rules, mm -hmm. that nothing quite sits on a level floor, everything is slightly wonky. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, that's the way English country houses were, and that's yes. the way that we look at rules. Yeah. It's very much an English country house restaurant yeah, in the heart of, of, of the West End. Yeah. So one of the other things that I think makes rules, of course, so unique and singular is its menu. Hmm. I mean, uh, the fresh game is not something that you find in this uh, scope anywhere else. I mean, you might find one or two other pieces of game on another menu, but Rules' raison d'etre is British game. It is. And to be honest, it's always been part of its history, and it was always known as the restaurant of the landed aristocracy. We sell more game than probably any other restaurant in the country. Um, and I had a visit to one of our main game dealers one day and they had a huge whiteboard with all of the orders from all of the other restaurants. And I think we were selling on average about 10 times more than the nearest competitor. Yeah. So it is quite staggering and it is our USP and one of the great beauties and joys for us is we have our own re estate in the northeast of England. Mm -hmm. And although we no longer do commercial shooting, we use it as a a kind of training centre for the staff mm -hmm. because we can take the staff up there and teach them all about estates, estate management, about game management. So when they come back, they can talk confidently to a guest if a guest has any questions yeah. about the various game boards yeah. that we sell. So I remember the first time I dined at Rules, uh, I, I had venison, right? And being from Texas, I mean, we've got venison on the menu. And, you know, to be honest, it's not traditionally something I particularly enjoy. Uh, but at the uh, uh, urging of the person with whom I was dining, uh, I ordered it. And I think one of the things that struck me immediately is that my perception or my experience with venison, uh, you know, outside of England or outside of rules, was totally different than here at this restaurant. I mean, your food and your game is just simply the best there is. And so, you know, kind of referencing my experiences with, with game, I'd say, well, you know, maybe I don't prefer game, but then you come here, it's absolutely delicious. And I th I, again, I think that goes back to the fact that we have such a depth of knowledge 
of game, yeah. about its quality, yeah. about how it should be treated, how it should be cooked and Prepared, how it should yeah. be served, that I think there's an expectation from guests when they come here and they rightly hold us to count to make sure that we are the best we can possibly be. Yeah, but so, utterly delicious. Yeah. I mean, I mean, well, that's kind unbelievable. Of so talk to me a little bit about you know uh, some of the different types of game that are a part of Rules Menu uh, that are unique sure. and that you know really set rules apart. Well, I think it all starts with the glorious 12th, of which course, is the yeah. start of the game season, the yes. start of the grouse shooting season. And obviously we are a huge part in that. Um, and then as the season develops, you then bring on partridge and wild duck and pheasant. Um, and the venison and so we are incredibly lucky because we have such good connections mm -hmm. with so many of the estates around the UK that we occasionally will get the, the kind of odd birds like woodcock um, and, the, and snipe which most other restaurants can't get their hands on but the game dealers know that if we get it it's not going to go to waste because we have such a, 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 a well, kind of a dedicated clientele. Exactly, that, you know, aficionados. Comes here for those who, items. Precisely, Kirby, and that's it. And so they know that we won't let them down. And I remember we had a, a I had an email from a chap to say his father was turning eighty, and he, sadly he had a terminal illness. And the last thing he wanted to do was to have a ptarmigan at rules. I don't even know what that is. What is it's, 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 a, it's a game bug. It's, okay. it's, it's, you only get it in Scotland. Uh, and so we contacted everyone that we knew and said, look, if anyone can lay their hands on a ptarmigan for us, let us know. And we managed to do it. And yeah. so yeah. he had his So one of the meal. estates, you know, they went out shooting, you know, let's go catch <laughs> one. <laughs> That's probably so, amazing. You know, and you know, ptarmigan, caper Kelly, all of that. So it's, it's wonderful the fact that we can, if we need to, try and lay our hands on some of these yeah. things. And don't let guests down. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about some of your favorite uh, items on the menu. I mean, someone that's coming to Rules for the first time that, you know, it's probably reading like a, you know, a, a, you know, a menu written in a foreign language, yeah. you know, as an American, I mean, 80% of what you just mentioned, you know, you very rarely, if ever, find uh, on a restaurant menu. Uh, you know, what are some uh, dishes or some, some things that someone should look out as for uh, as being unique and particularly delicious? I think the grouse, for certain. Now, when the, the grouse develops as the season goes on, but at the very beginning of the season, grouse you would normally hang for at least three days. Okay. But at the very beginning of the season, there is nothing more beautiful or delicate and as succulent as a grouse fresh off the, off the estate. Yeah. And this is uh, associated with the glorious 12th. Exactly. Right, which traditionally is the opening of the shooting season. Of the shoot the legal everyone... opening of the shooting season. It's actually by statute. Yes. So it's not as though we've, we've made this up. Yeah. So the grouse season very clearly in loss lasts from the 12th of August to the 10th of December. Mm. But very rarely does it go through all the way through until the 10th of December, yeah. dependent on how good the, the, the crop of birds has actually yeah. been. This year's not going to be particularly good, which is a shame. So talk to me a little bit about the tradition of that dinner, because I know that you, know, you guys uh, throw a glorious 12th dinner to really kind of celebrate the opening of that season. And it, it's quite, I mean, it's one of those uh, you know, reservations that, you know, if you're not on the repeating uh, book of reservations, you're probably not getting in at all. Uh, and if you're lucky, it, you made it two years in advance. Yeah. And the thing for me is that it sounds slightly elitist and it's, that it's not based around elitism. It is simply we have such a bank of regular customers yes. who know the 12th is coming up and always book, and even in yeah. many cases, once the dinner is finished on, say, the 12th on yeah. 2019, they've booked, booked for the following, the following year. year. Um, but it's all determined by how many birds are actually shot and how many birds can be brought but down. But you guys are London driving them down the same day. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. that's amazing, yeah. right? So it's I mean, there are someone in a Range Rover, is, you know. <laughs> There's actually a restaurant, I can't remember which one it was, actually helicop helicoptered them down. Oh, is that right? Um, because it's always a thing to be the first to yes. actually have it on your menu. Well, and, and to have it in London. I mean, if you're yeah. shooting at your estate, of course, you're going to have grouse for dinner that evening. But to be able to bring it into London for maybe those that weren't able to go out for the opening of the season has been part of what has made that tradition yeah. so special. And exactly that. It's tradition and history. Yeah. And that sits perfectly with everything that Rules is all about. Yeah. Is, is, that, is, is that continuity and that people know that they can come back here mm -hmm. and there is an expectation and it's our job 
and, and our belief that we meet that expectation for them so that we don't disappoint, yeah. and which is why, thank God, Rules has been here for yeah. 223 years. Well, I've yet to enjoy grouse. I've got to put that on my list of items to eat while I'm here in London on this trip. Anything else from the menu that, you know, that you would steer one towards, you know, that hasn't been uh, to the restaurant? To be honest, we, we guide people through the game menu because if you haven't had it, um, it can be, as you say, slightly confusing because there are real variations in flavour. And what we try to do with people is take them in at the kind of the entry point, if you mm -hmm. like, which would be partridge or pheasant, which yeah. partridge is particularly delicate. Pheasant really is just like a gamey chicken, to be okay. quite honest. So it's a very safe bet to give people that entry point. Well, what's on the adventurous side then? Uh, so if that's the entry point, you know, for those seeking a little bit more adventure, uh, and to, let's say, oh, you know, uh, veer off some... the beaten path, what would you recommend? Jugged hare. Okay, I don't even know what that is. Okay, well, it's, <laughs> in essence, jugged hare, it's, it's, it's a casserole, it's a stew. Okay. But the thickening agent, and this, this is where it puts people off, the thickening agent was the blood. Okay. So it makes an incredibly rich, aromatic stew. It's and like it black used to, pudding, yeah. So yes, not, not too far yeah. off, but it has that real depth of flavour. And it is a real aficionado's dish. That when it comes to the table and the lid is taken off, the aromas are just in, It happens to be my favourite game dish. Oh, really? Um, I need to put that one on yeah, also. Yeah, definitely. Well, next time you come, we'll have dinner. Yes. We'll, we'll make sure jugged hair is on. Yes. It's just... And that's the wonderful... Again, the depth of the cooking and the depth of the experience in the kitchen knows about all these dishes. So mm -hmm. things that we don't necessarily have on all the time. Yeah. We have them on as specials all yeah. the way through the game season too. Yeah, well, you've been cooking for 225 years, you know, yeah. and you've had time to evolve the recipes. <laughs> well, not I, I would say not evolve, perfect. but perfect. <laughs> there we go. There we are. <laughs> so if you haven't got it right by now, yes. we shouldn't be here. Yeah, absolutely. So before we go upstairs, um, there's just one other thing I'd like to show you, and that's this here, which was a caricature of Maggie Thatcher. Okay and it's a triptych in three pieces. Um, and it's Maggie dressed as Joan of Arc. <laughs> Very fitting. But the bottom piece, uh, I couldn't let the artist put up, which okay. caused real <laughs> problems for him. We had a table here originally, um, and the problem was it was Maggie Thatcher dressed as Joan of Arc, but the bottom piece was how she had her foot on the Falkland Islands, which we <laughs> went to war with in the 1980s. Uh, that's brilliant. And he couldn't understand, and I didn't want really to say too much about it, and eventually I had to say to him, look, John, you can't put it up, because that is the Argentine ambassador's favorite table, so you can't have Maggie standing <laughs> in the Falklands right beside him. So oh, that's, thankfully that's he agreed. Incredible. So welcome to our cocktail bar. Beautiful. Originally called the Edward the Seventh Room, mm -hmm. and as we come round this little corner here, I'll explain the reason why. In here, this was originally when this was part of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. This was the favourite dining spot of Edward the Seventh when he was Prince of Wales, and he was having the affair with Lily Langtry, the actress. Wow. Okay. And what they used to do, the hooks are still here, you can see on the beam, mm -hmm. and they would have the curtains and close the curtains, the same as the Salon Privé used to be in mm -hmm. Paris. But because originally it meant they were walking in through the tables and everyone, well, everyone in society knew about the affair anyway. But the, the, the Rules family actually cut a door into the wall, which you can see on the other side, ah. so that they had their own private, private entrance and exit, so no one knew when they were here and when they weren't that necessarily here. That's incredible. And so, uh, what's the, I mean, you've got the little uh, drawing here on the panel, the former door. This is, I guess, a reference to Edward VII. Edward VII and Lily Langtry. Yeah. Well, of course, Lily, very kindly, who was very fond of the place, commissioned the portrait here and actually signed and gave it to the restaurant oh, really? as a memento of her time here. And that was before, in actual fact, she moved to the U.S and eventually opened her own vineyard in California. Did she really? Yeah. When was this gifted over? It would have been the late 1800s because okay. he took the throne in 1901 okay. and he was already having an affair with another woman yeah. by that point. So it would probably have been 1870s to 1880s that he would have actually handed it. She would have given Recent it over. history for this restaurant. Recent history, yeah. yeah. Modern history. Modern <laughs> history. Oh, wow, I've never seen this before. Yes. Beautiful. This is our winter garden. 
Originally, this was just a space that was used for most of the mechanical engineering part of rules. Okay. And so we decided that as we have developed rules over the years, if you like, that we had the space that wasn't being best utilised. Mm -hmm. And so it was time for us to replace some of the kit, if you like. And so we thought, right, let's do it as we did with the kitchen in 93. Mm -hmm. Let's reinvest so that when the time comes that we hand rules over to the next generation, it has everything it possibly needs. Yeah. And so we, we, we created this the space. The outline was here, but it was just a, a vision of what we wanted to do. And rather than replicate what we had out there, it was the perfect opportunity yeah. to bring some natural light in just to create something yeah. completely different. Well, it's charming. I mean, it really reminds me of my club in Paris is a winter garden uh, that's much like this, you know, very open, natural light, uh, natural plants. <laughs> uh, what, are, what is this on the, uh, the lampshades? I'm seeing that right there. It's actually pheasant feathers. Really? Well, it keeps in the game theme throughout yes. the restaurant. So these are actually all handmade by a small company in Hampshire. So Incredible. I love this it's, place. It's, it's everything about rules. It's, it's the old thing, but retail is detail. And that's yeah. exactly the same for me with rules and with the way that we go about things. Yeah. It's all about attention to detail. Yeah. And if you get that right, people love you for it. Yeah. Well, and I think that you know, one of the things that's apparent you know, as an outsider, if you will, is that you know, despite the incredibly rich history and having been around for 225 years, you know, you're not resting on your laurels. No. I mean, you guys are as, as professional and as rigorous uh, today, you know, as you probably always have been. And it comes out in really every single detail of the restaurant. I mean, the quality of the service, the quality of the food, you know, the attention to detail of the decor, how uh, well it's kept up, you know, the addition of the new bar, you know, this room. I mean, it's, it's so nice, you know, before or after dinner just to be able to pop up and have a drink. Yeah. You know, whereas 15 years ago, you know, that wasn't something that was you available. Do it. Yeah, and it's lovely because not just for diners, but you know, people can just come in and enjoy yes. a glass of champagne, a martini, Absolutely. or a beautifully made martini. So it's lovely that this has been an addition to the restaurant, yeah. and that's part of our legacy, if you yeah. like. And that's again what it's all about: yeah. it's about legacy yeah. and about us passing rules on yeah. to the next generation. And sometimes it's not the most easiest, it's not the easiest reservation to get right because it's a quite popular restaurant. Oh. And so if you're in London and you kind of last minute, you're like, you know what, I want to go pop in and see rules, but there's no perhaps availability, and you can just come in and have a drink and still really experience the magic of this place. Well, what we'll always do, Kirby, is we're aware of our place and we're aware that we're here to serve. So even if you do come in, ask if you want a table and we'll do our best to still accommodate you as best mm -hmm. we can so don't 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 ever think that you, yeah. you won't get a welcome at rules yeah we're delighted to see you it's that's what great. we do yeah well ricky thank you so much oh, i pleasure. can't tell you how much i've enjoyed this can i make a suggestion yes please how about a perfectly made martini ah, before you go that sounds brilliant i think i'm in need of one perfect so brian two martinis please ah. I assume one vodka. One vodka, please. And one gin. Kirby. A gin, please, yes. Gin. Okay. So how what? do you make your famous martini? Um, six parts gin or vodka, so okay. one part removed. Well, I'll take, I'll take your, your famous martini then. Okay. Uh, and standard proportions. I would recommend a twist. A twist, so absolutely. Use tank right 10 with you. Yes, okay. Well, I hear the cocktails here are quite legendary. Yes, well, this man is quite legendary. He's known, actually, as one of the four legends in London. Really? Yeah. Okay. So. It was a real catch, Brian joining us when we opened, and Brian opened the bar for us, and so um, deserted us yeah. for a short period of time. But, but um, keep running back. Running back. Kate saw right. sense. It's funny how I things work themselves out. Going on, you know, yeah. yeah, I mean, that is, uh, I think, again, an interesting sign of the modernization and remaining relevant, you know, traditionally. 50 years ago, I mean, a cocktail bar would be really unheard of at a hmm. fine dining establishment like this. Uh, but, you know, before or after dinner, you know, it's just so nice to be able to walk in and have a cocktail. Yeah, and that's the lovely thing, and that's what we realized when we decided to create the bar, was that there was always something slightly missing in the whole experience, and this has, if you can hear me over the ceiling, yeah. that has actually just 
kind of brought it full circle now. Yeah. You can have the whole experience in rules. But if you want to come and have a pre-dinner cocktail, mm -hmm. please join us. The lovely thing is you have privacy. Mm -hmm. That you, you don't feel that you're involved in this melee that's going on, that goes on yeah. outside in Covent Garden. Here it's perfectly peaceful. Yeah. And this way you can just come and relax and, and enjoy Look the whole this. experience. I mean, just the presentation with the frosted glasses. And I much prefer a glass like this than a martini glass, which yeah. always seems to end up, you know, <laughs> exactly. on my shirt or this something. Is kind of like a club service. It's a big club yet. Yes, it does. And you know, the other thing that is, I mean, you said it's relatively new. I mean, it feels like it's been here forever. Yeah. And again, that that's that's what we try and do. I'm going to discard that. Okay. Is we um, we try to make sure that everything complements and nothing um, kind of stands out against. That's probably the most avant-garde thing we've done in the Winter Garden, but it seems just to blend in. Thanks very much, yeah. Brian. So well, Kirby, Ricky. lovely to have you back in London. And to quality Welcome craftsmanship to rules. and tradition. Cheers. Good health. Yeah, delicious. Mm. That is exciting. Not a bad way to start a day, is it? You know.